Should you have multiple YouTube channels or just one YouTube channel? Now, there are a lot of pros and cons and things that we're gonna discuss, so that by the end of this quick episode, you're gonna have a definite answer what's right for you. We're gonna talk about some things like what's possible and, and kind of what the work capacity is per channel. Like we'll talk about mindset and we're gonna also hear from other YouTube experts all combined into this one episode sharing their take and why we make the recommendations that we do. The first thing that I really need you to consider and understand is what does it take to create a successful YouTube channel? Okay, in the entire month of, of December, you were there with me 22 episodes now you know what it takes to create a successful channel. You know, 260 episodes in a year to turn your channel into a lead generating machine. Okay, that is so worth it. The outcome is so amazing, right? If we're talking about two YouTube channels, then we might be talking about 520 episodes per year. Can you wrap your head around that? The problem becomes when, it, when starting two YouTube channels, whether you have very limited time or even if you have a lot of time, is you're splitting your focus still. If you try and chase two rabbits, you end up catching neither. So on a scale from one to 10, if you only have 10 summarized units of energy, my problem is if you got channel one and you were to build on it, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's how much impact you could make would be if you devoted it all into one channel. What he's saying here is you only have so much mental capacity, only so much creative energy. So if you added all that up and your maximum amount of mental energy were 10 units, then you can either dedicate and devote those 10 units toward one channel or divide it across two different channels. Even if we're not talking about hours, like I'm gonna put this many hours to this one and this many hours to this one. Like I like the way that he talks about it because that's definitely the way that I experience it is like this amount of mental exhaustion. But if you had two channels, if you end up saying, okay, well, my main channel is gonna get six of these, but in the other box cars, I'm gonna end up putting, you know, four over here, then you're ultimately, if this is your destination, you're delaying how long it's gonna take for you to get there because you are splitting your energy, you're splitting your focus. So within a YouTube channel, there are multiple content strategies. You can focus on suggested traffic. You can focus on search traffic. Now, if you wanna generate a channel that generates leads for your business, search traffic is the best place to start. But so often people leave too early. They switch strategies too soon. They don't stick with it long enough. My recommendation for my leaf strategy is actually one to two years. So that's between 260 to 520 episodes over one to two years. An important way to look at it is about the audience. All the content that you create needs to be valued by that audience. And if you're creating two different types of content that are for different audiences, then you're gonna have problems. There's gonna be a conflict. I've actually experienced that conflict on my own channel. I make a lot of content about how to YouTube and how to entrepreneur. Those are pretty much the same audience in most cases. And so for the entrepreneurship side, I started answering questions about hiring and hiring people in the Philippines. Well, one of my videos, why I hire people in the Philippines really took off, but it wasn't for my audience. It was actually for people in the Philippines that really wanted to work for me. Well, I liked the growth. I liked that that video took off and I guess I didn't realize that it wasn't my target audience. I could have easily looked in the analytics, but I fed it, I fed it, and I kind of grew the wrong audience. Let's say that people really dig your vlog content. When you publish all of your other content, they don't respond to it. It lands on their homepage, they get the email notifications, it shows up in other recommendation features on YouTube, and they just don't click on it. Well, what's happening is you're actually hurting the click-through on those videos, which is basically telling YouTube, hey, even the people that are subscribed to this channel aren't digging this. So you want to stick with one strategy that's predictable, that you know will lead to results, that you know will lead to lead generation for your business. Dude, we've only, we haven't even been doing the Think Marketing podcast for an entire year and I'm gonna start something different? Man, you gotta keep doing the same thing. Keep compounding your energy, keep compounding the momentum. I feel like the struggle is hard enough to stay focused on one strategy, let alone being divided between two different channels. Now I'm talking about that one focus, I'm actually gonna help you the entire month of February, really dedicate all your energy to one channel 
to improve the production quality, but also the efficiency. So I'm just making an announcement here. In February, there are 20 weekdays, and guess what? I'm launching a 20 module course. So just like we did in December, all about YouTube strategy and pulling in traffic, generating leads. In February, we're continuing that conversation, but more focused on the technical side of it, the filming, the editing. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the alerts because that starts on February 1st, every weekday. Okay, listen to this quote from Sean, I love it. It would be easier to get Think Media to 80 million views a year, doubling my channel because of the momentum we have, than actually growing another channel from scratch. Look at it from a subscriber's perspective. Let's say somebody new visits your channel, they enjoy it and they're trying to decide if they should subscribe. A lot of people before actually subscribing to a channel after they watch some of your videos, they like to go visit your channel page and see if you upload a lot of videos like the one that they're watching and thinking about subscribing for. I mean, that's what I do. When I discover a new channel, I'll click on their channel, I'll come here to the home page, and then very quickly, I come here and I click on videos, right? And I'll just scroll and I'll look at their videos and I'll see if there's other content similar to what I watched, if there's other content that I'm interested in. Now, if you don't upload a lot more videos in that same niche, people will be hesitant to subscribe due to the fact that they wanna subscribe just for that type of content. I produce over 30 channels, but I'm not the star of each of these channels. Each channel has a person that they are the star of the show and they put 100% of their mental energy and capacity into that one channel. Now, I also have a team of 40 people behind the scenes that help me in production of all of these channels. So now personally, I do have other ideas of YouTube channels that I wanna create, but because of the assistance that I have for my team and because of the momentum that I already have on my channel and all these other channels, I'm at a place where I can start to do that where it doesn't take away any momentum or mental energy. But this is many years in the making and there's no way that I could have done that in the beginning. I have 12 full-time people on the Think Media team now. In that same video, he shared that in the beginning, he made the mistake of launching with multiple channels and he struggled. So then he just focused on one, he grew big, now he has a big team, and now he actually does have multiple channels that have traction. Let's say that you have a main channel, and you're focused on that channel, and you're putting out content on a regular basis, everything's going great, you're getting momentum, people are loving it. So is there ever a time to create a second channel? But you've been making that type of content for a while, and because of that, you don't have to try very hard to put that type of content together, and you're not really challenged anymore, so you need a creative outlet. So I know that I personally have experienced this burnout and this need to try other things. Well, a creative outlet is a fantastic reason to have another channel where you can still have your core focused content and then you have another channel that is more of an expression channel. So this way you're not feeling deprived from really creating the content that you want, but you're just not taking away energy and focus from your main channel. Ultimately, you need to make sure that this side channel or this creative endeavor that it in no way hurts the main channel. And you need to designate which one is my main channel. Now, as you put the focus on your main channel, each video gives you a little trickle of traffic, but you put out another video, so now you've got two trickles, and you put out another one, three trickles, right? Eventually you have 10 videos, so 10 different trickles of traffic. Months into this, now you have hundreds of videos, so you've got hundreds of trickles, and that kind of adds up to a hose, and eventually a fire hose of traffic. And that is the sole focus. I gotta get this trickle, this little stream into a river, into a gusher first. So how do I know all this stuff about YouTube? Well, I actually know a lot more. I've written a book on how to leverage YouTube to generate leads for your business. And I wanna give this to you for free. I've put two years into putting all my strategy into this book. I'm known as the guy that can help you generate $10,000 from only 100 views. Whereas all other YouTube experts, they teach you how to generate millions of views to make $10,000. So if you wanna learn how to leverage YouTube in that way, go to natesyoutubebook.com. Now what you'll find there, I expect you to cover the costs. So the cost to print this full color book and the cost to ship, but no profit to me, that's my gift to you.